thanks for that warm welcome and a real privilege and a joy um, to lead your worship here at East Cowes. It's a good job if you call the pushback today, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but before we start, uh, this is a prayer for the peace of Jerusalem to pray. O oh Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for that day when the lion will lie down with the lamb, for that day when swords will be beaten into plowshares, for that day when the law of love will be written on every person's heart, for that day when the, peace, the Prince of Peace will sit on his throne in Jerusalem. Amen. My theme today in our service is helps and hindrance. We're going to look at the passage of scripture in Acts chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. And so we start as we sing our first hymn, hymn number Jesus' name. And Lord, we bring these, our prayers, 
It is through the name of your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All that. Let us say the family prayer that Jesus told his disciples to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we have a prayer for our offering, which is uh, the place of the festival which we brought our gifts to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just bless you that every gift that we have is from you and you alone. All that we have is yours. And Lord, we bring these gifts, these times, these offerings that love for you. Take these gifts. Use them for your glory and honour for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we sing our next two hymns straight after one another continually. Uh, singing first hymn 385 Holy Spirit we welcome you. Hymn 385, and straight after that, uh, hymn 333, Majesty, Worship His Majesty, 333.
this uh, Lori Gardelko to read to us our Bible readings. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. The apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely, just as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing in unpure, impure, or unclean has ever entered my mouth. And the voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was called up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stepped to the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as it had come on us at the beginning. And then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave to them the same gift as he gave to us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objection and praised God, saying, So then, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Our second reading is taken from John 13, and it's verses 31 to 35. When he was gone, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. We now sing hymn number 20. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Hymn number 20.
day that we can praise and glorify your name. Thank you for our families. We praise you, Lord. Among all that we have, there are so many hurting and needy people. We lift them up to you and ask that you would bless them, help them, heal them. May your peace fill their hearts and may joy shine. Almighty God, you are the God who can do all things. You reign over all power and might are in your hands. We pray for the nations, especially Ukraine and Russia, and the grieving family in the USA that once again have had mass shooting. And we pray that your word will free course, bringing sinners to your love, turning them to you, Jesus, in salvation. We pray for our church family, especially Ken and Dorothy, Ralph and Frieda, Janet, Phil and David, and all who are in pain. Give them peace and healing and let them know your love. Lord, we pray for our leaders, especially Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in her platinum year. We also pray that our politicians will unite for the good of all people. Lord, hear these prayers and accept them as humble offerings to you and guide us through this coming week. Amen. We sing him 544. As the deer pants for the water, him 544.
and hindrances. Uh, time would not permit, but what I do suggest to you uh, it, it is possible, but when you get home, to, to read Acts chapter 10. Um, uh, um, Acts chapter 11 is basically like a, 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 continu a continuation. Now the apostles of brethren who were in Judea heard that Gentiles had also received the word of God. When Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them. And you might say, Well, God, what a subject, and how does this affect us that he's cows today and get this whole thing in context? A few years ago, when I went on the honeymoon uh, with Stella, this was in Turkey, and um, it, 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 she'd done the Reader's Digest, and, and so we uh, had the holiday, the, the honeymoon, basically, um, it, it was with the, that's what was it called, um, Tourism and Industry or something in Turkey, so we had to pay some of the money, but it was all like a guided tour as well as like a holiday in Turkey. And had a conversation before Gil like when I was at Skate Leader and I really enjoyed it. I, I mean it wasn't much of a break for Stella, you know, when you stayed from about three different hotels, getting up about seven o'clock in the morning and getting back at seven o'clock at night and we had a guide. And I remember one of the things that stuck in the mind when he explained about Turkey, he, he said for the man in the family, in, in Turkey then was uh, an Islamic country, but it was ruled by uh, a secular government. Things are not quite like that now. I think it's getting more uh, Islamic, the government as well. I'm like, right, but, but, but then it was like an Islamic country ruled uh, by a secular government. And what the guide said, he explained a little bit about like family life. And he said, when the man was circumcised, whereas in this country we're predominantly Christian, uh, there it's Islamic. And the young man, I think I got this right, was circumcised as a, a, just before his teens. Um, something like that, but the family would have a celebration like we do uh, when one of our family gets baptised. Another important part uh, in, in the culture was when the man uh, was to marry uh, his bride, uh, the engagement, and like this country, they would have a party. They would have a celebration it, it, it was saying the most important thing what the, the father would, uh, the father would, respect the father would, to the young man who was going to get married because when you're 18 in Turkey then, you have to do two years of, of national service and he would say, um, <laughs> have you done your national service? And it was really uh, interesting. It, 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 and so I'm going to ask you a question now. Uh, what is three things, the important things about being a Jew, let's just visualize like you were a Jew this morning, what, and looking at it from the man's point of view, not, not being sort of sexist, but what we're looking at, what, what are the three important things? I've said one of them. To, to, so you've just got to say to two of them. I said circumcision. Oh, yeah, say, say again. Oh, it's yeah, yeah that, 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 that's very important. I was thinking of something else for the other man. Uh, Yes, it's very important. I wasn't thinking that, but well done for bringing that up. Anything else at all? Come on. Don't believe it. Sunday support to us. Begins with us. Right. Sabbath. This is important to the Jewish people. Yes. Very important. Few were on the Sabbath. No. And what was the other important thing? Friday night dinner. That's right, that's right, yeah, that's, yeah, and what was the other important thing? Well done, that's, that's, but there's something else important as well. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that they celebrate festivals. I was thinking of something else, and, and I'll say, the dietary, you've got to be careful what you eat as well, is that right? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is definitely that when we went to Turkey, there was no pork or, or no bacon. It, it, then Peter explained it to them, saying it over from the beginning, saying, Why was it a city of Jumpa? Pray. And in a trance, I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. And when I observed it intently and considered, I saw four footed animals on the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, Caleb, and Eve. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. Don't you think that's a wonderful thing? Um, when you're praying, to have a vision, you just visualize it, and this sheep comes down from heaven with all these creatures. I don't know how it could be possible when you see all these creatures. And before, um, if you read Acts chapter 10, Peter is really hungry before he starts his prayer. And this sheep comes from heaven from the four quarters, all these animals, and I'm quite like this passage. I used to help a gamekeeper at one time, and um, I really enjoyed it, seeing all the wildlife, seeing all the animals. And God says, Peter, kill and eat. But he says, not so, Lord. For nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. And, and, and what God says, you must not call common. Now this was done three times. Don't call it common or unclean. This was quite a, a change of revelation. And this was to show Peter through this vision, through this trance, that God is not a respecter of persons, that God had poured out his Holy Spirit on the Gentiles as he happened to them at, at Pentecost. Then the Spirit told me to go with him, doubting nothing. And he went to the house of, of Cornelius. And he told us how he'd seen an angel standing in his house who had said to him, Send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And so Cornelius and all of his household was saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord. How he said, John indeed baptized water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit today in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit, like we need it with all our hearts and our lives for, for guidance. And I know so often I've done things on my own strength. It's so often I've just fallen flat on my back and, and flat on my face. But I really just encourage you to read the Acts of the Apostles where the Holy Spirit is acting. The leadership of the Holy Spirit is very, very important. Am I Challenge all of us today this morning and my challenge myself is am I sensitive and receptive to the Spirit's leading? When I was a young man, I, saw, I told you about my experience with a, a lady, she was uh, in her 90s. She was frail and she couldn't hear very well. And she always used to say to me, go to the drawer over there, pull out this lovely 
King James Bible. She was a, a widow. And she'd say, read me some verses of scripture. She would know the Bible almost by heart. She didn't have any children. Her husband was a shepherd. He passed away a few years before. But she told me how every night they used to read the Bible uh, together. It was really, really important. But one of the things she told me was authentic, it was real and sincere. She had the unfortunate situation, you know, she just, she must have been 90 at least. Uh, she had to move house and it's very traumatic. The landlord wanted her out and the council sort of uh, gave her um, a bungalow to move in the next village. As you well imagine, they say one of the stressful things in life is, is moving house. My, my friend there, but especially when you're older. But, but she said, you know, obviously she was stressed, but she said she had a vision of Jesus. She's seen him face to face, I know it was real. And that just gave her that, that assurance. That just gave her that peace that God was with her, with her at this particular traumatic time. Uh, in Wesley's journal, when he was preaching, it says there they just fell down as dead men. The Holy Spirit at work in the lives of men working. And I went to a, a house group in Shrill, which we we'll talk about the 1972. And these people were really believed the Bible. It's like Acts of the Holy Spirit sort of fellowship. But I just went along there sort of occasionally. And I remember there was a a lady had a vision there about, about a house where somebody was going to move in. It was going to be a, a broken down fence and the garden would be fertile. And that person who was wife, when he got married, moved into that particular property. It was just confirmation. I just encourage us, all of us this morning, to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, to be led of the Holy Spirit. In our own Methodist hymn books, in the beginning, it used to quote that uh, verse from Ephesians, Be filled with the Spirit, speak into yourselves in psalms, in spiritual psalms, making melody unto the Lord. And sometimes, when I say the title of a message helps and hindrances, we, we say, well, how can God possibly move in that person? Look at his law. And yet, God does move uh, in the most extraordinary ways. Ways unexpected. Ways we would not think possible. I was sharing with uh, Gail before the service about, about the great doors of Steve there, where I used to go there with the travelers some of them through the church tent came to know the Lord came into a personal uh, experience of Jesus as the Lord and Savior there was a I used to call him the gypsy vicar his name was uh, Terry uh, Hurst and he was a traveler and how he he became ordained as a, a minister sadly it was difficult for the travelers to settle uh, in denominations so they couldn't form their own uh, church but he was just amazed just blessed by the grace of God that God could just move in his life that God could change him help him let us all be encouraged by what God is doing in these days and in our communities we pray for our community, pray for our friends pray for our families and if our families are are not of the faith. We love them to be of the faith. But let us pray for them faithfully. And I'm just going to so I'm going to finish, but I will absolutely finish now. I know a, a lady who uh, prayed for 22 years for her husband to become a, a Christian. In the end, he became a Christian. He believed Jesus became his Lord and personal Savior. 
a few years or very soon after that he passed away went to the glory he died he went to be with jesus his lord and his savior today is the day of salvation amen so we sing now with our final hymn that lovely hymn i the lord of sea and sky